It is always an awesome experience, a great privilege when we come together in fellowship. I welcome you to our online service this morning. Happy Sunday and how are you doing? This is the Potter's House of Lagos. We're glad to have you. If today is your first time, join us here. Please check out for the newcomers form in the link below and fill out. We'd like to connect with you. So February is the month of love and we'll be talking about love, 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 the concept, the concept that is so misconstrued and oftentimes, you know, controversial. But today we want to examine the love Ruth had for Naomi, her mother-in-law. We see how Ruth dis displayed submission, loyalty, commitment. Despite their hardships, she was able to sustain her commitment to Naomi. And I don't know how much of commitment you have for your spouse or for your friend or for your vision, in fact. Today, we're examining the different sp and perspectives of love. We have called it the shades of love. And we hope that as we take this journey together, we would have to check out our ideologies, our mindsets, our belief systems, and in fact, challenge the world systems of what love truly should be. Welcome again and God bless you. But just before we go on further into the service today, let's take a short prayer. Father God, we thank you for today. We bless your name, God, for bringing us together today. We are eager to learn from you. We're eager to hear what you have to say to us. Speak to us today in the name of Jesus. We appreciate you for your unconditional love towards us. You love us even when we're not worthy of your love. You love us even when we do not love ourselves enough. Thank you for loving us, O oh God, and teach us how to truly exemplify and replicate your love in all that we do. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And now, very quickly now, we hand you over to the potter's wheel as it take us into the praise and worship session. We will be right back shortly. Yeah. 
PHOL Online. Thank you for tuning in again this Sunday. It's literally the last day of February and what a great experience we've had this month. Now it's time to take a few moments to catch up on what's happening in the life of our church. This is a TPHOL update. Did you join our corporate prayer transformation hub last Tuesday? What a time of prayer, so intense and impactful. We we'll look forward to more testimonies from the experience. If you've never taken part in these prayer sessions, please plan to participate in the next meeting holding on Tuesday, the 30th of March, 2021. Mark your calendar and spread the word. Next Sunday, March 7th, is the first Sunday of the month. And in our usual fashion, we'll be taking our time to give thanks to God for all He has done and the new things He has prepared for us. So you don't want to miss this. Get your friends to attend as it's going to be a special Thanksgiving service. Here is what to expect. Now remember that we also have an online experience for our global church family. You can connect at 7 a.m. every Sunday on our YouTube channel, The Potter's House of Lagos. Our junior church service is set to continue online today at 9.30 a.m. on YouTube for the younger children and 4 p.m. on Zoom for the double digits. Those are the announcements we have this morning. Don't forget that we are here for you if you need to reach out for counseling or prayer. Just call the numbers on screen and someone will be available to help. We also have loads of contents on our social media handles. Do connect and interact with us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. What an awesome worship experience we're having this morning. Keep that mood. Don't let it go. Because there's so much God has in store for us today. We need to listen, pay attention. In fact, get your notepads to jot down a few points that will be necessary for you to look at again. Because God has something to say. Say to your neighbor, to your friends, your family members, whoever is sitting close to you, God has something to say. Good to have you back. I have with me um, beautiful people sitting to my right and my left, and you're wondering what they're here for. We're going to be having a discussion on love, different shades of love. Now, we're back to the story of Ruth and Naomi, and then we want to see how we can apply the principles, the lessons from their own story to our own lives. So, um, I have to my left, Mr. Aniche. Aniche Philabosi, he's been married for six years, and though his wife is not here, she's here with us in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. And then I have here, we have Mrs. Kainde Cattell. 
her, and she's married for 28 years. 24, 24 years, I beg your pardon. She's married for 24 years. Her spouse is not here with us, but he's also here because she's here with us today. Thank you for having me. Good to have you in service today. And I have Mr. and Mrs. Anthony, <laughs> the newest couple in town, maybe. Oh. <laughs> They've been married for about two months, pretty young, but quite knowledgeable. And so they'll be sharing us their stories with us today as we discuss the shades of love. Now, Amos 3 verse 3, when it comes to mind, can two work together except they agree? Mr. Nietzsche, can you help us expound that verse of the scripture? Um, so, um, Amos 3, 3 talks about an agreement. So what does an agreement do? It helps people to plan how to get or reach a destination. So if there's no agreement, if there's no plan, if we both do not have that same vision, that same sight, that this is what we want to do and this is where we want to get to, halfway through that journey, someone might abandon ship or decide that they're going on another direction. And once that happens, there is now a disjoint. That means that's end goal, that's end destination, that location we're supposed to get to, either as couples, as uh, business, as anything you might think of, we will not reach it. So if there's no agreement, there's always going to be strife, controversy, and arguments, so to speak. So in my, you know, my opinion, I think that is what an agreement is, is people plan to get to a destination and hold each other and walk towards that destination. And when one falls, the other pulls the partner up and make sure that they both reach that goal. That's amazing. Thank you very much for that perspective. Okay, so um, Sister Kinde, um, I just want to ask you a question. So he spoke about agreement. How do we, I mean, marriage itself is an agreement, but sometimes we disagree in marriage. Mm -hmm. So how do we get to agree after a disagreement? Yeah, um, marriage is a, uh coming together of two people of different backgrounds, different training, different upbringing. We have so many things in different, you know, different things, ideology, ideas, the upbringing, you know, perspective to things and even to life. But this is two people coming together as one body. And so when get every tendency for us to have difference, okay, in our decision making, even what we conclude on but the institution is this is by god himself and so because of the belief that we have because we see it as one body no longer two people in part right now but one body and so we have to reach an agreement how do we not get into this agreement communication here matters how do you communicate the, whatever you have issue whatever issue you are discussing how do you communicate it to your partner and it's one thing to communicate, it's another thing to have the understanding of what you are talking about. So don't just communicate to your partner, make sure there is an understanding. When there's an understanding, there will be an agreement. An agreement is not just agreeing on something. In this communication, you know that there is, you have a target to achieve. So in marriage, there's so many things we tend to talk about, okay? Let me not talk about courtship. But when we come to marry, there's so many things we tend to agree on. But unfortunately, most times, we don't talk about it. It's not say, okay, I think you should understand. No, it's not about understanding. It's about communicating it to your partner to achieve the purpose. If you go to point A, there's tendency for the other party to go to point B because there's no understanding. Because you never voice out what you want to do. You never make our making to understand this is what we want to achieve and there has to be an achievement. So how do we now, how do we now get it done? Communication matters. So I base it about from the word of God, there is need to communicate and communicating properly. Oh, I like that. Communicating properly. Effective communication. All right, Ander, how are you doing? Oh, you look pretty like, I mean, for a new bride. <laughs> they always look pretty, right? So, yes. Um, bride, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying that there's a glow that comes with just, with, 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 I mean, with just newly being married. Of course, all brides look pretty. I say it again. 
old bright look pretty. I'm an old bright I look pretty. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Andrea, please tell me. I mean, I know you just got married, but prior to your marriage, you must have dated um, some men before you met your husband, right? Um, I'm, and I'm, I'm sure you have friends who must have said to you, you know what? I mean, men don't deserve to have the 100% because you have heard stories of men who cheat on their wives, men who do not give their wives enough you know money who are saying you know what my money is my money your money is your money you go work for your money i don't know what your ideology is or was but tell me wh wh what's your opinion regarding such um um you know ideologies okay um first of all i want to say when a purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Mm -hmm. So if you come into a relationship expecting to give 50%, I tell you, the other person is going to be frustrated. Mm. If you don't give 100% and you're expecting the other person to bring 100% to the table, one person is going to be frustrated. And it's either the person giving or even you receiving because you'll be demanding more from the person which is being selfish. But to you, you may not see it as being selfish, but you just want to take... And take, and they, take. they use a the term they're guarding themselves <laughs> okay so when you guard yourself how then do you want the other person to give you so much of themselves because first of all you will not value what they are putting on the table so for you to expect 100 percent you should be willing to give 100 percent let it fail and then you learn from it and then you move on with that experience to now navigate yourself better but if you prevent yourself from giving all of yourself, you will not know the areas in your life that you need to correct, you need to checkmate. Sometimes we don't take corrections. Sometimes we don't like corrections, so we hide. And then when the other person is giving all of themselves, you now say, no, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't, which you're frustrating the other person. So I believe in a relationship, which is the agreement. If you come to agreement that this is where we are going to, let's put 100%. So that one person is not frustrated, and then, leaves the ship before time. Maybe that's even why a lot of relationships don't even mm. make it. Definitely that's the reason. If I can add to that, please. Okay. The Bible says they were both naked yeah. and they were not ashamed. Yeah. There's a place of transparency in marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you are not transparent to your spouse, there will always be frictions. Either, Definitely either so. financially or whatever. They were both naked. We're not ashamed. There is nothing to hide any longer. If we have that belief that we're no longer two separate entities, but we're one body, yeah. what is there to hide? And I must put it here that it's better to let your spouse, even to know what you have been involved in, before coming into marriage. Oh, I, I, can I quickly interrupt you then? Yeah. What if he cannot or she cannot handle it? She know. cannot. How do you know she <laughs> cannot handle it? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a picture here because I heard the story and it's a, it's a true life story. So. Yeah. Um, a lady had an abortion, you know, several abortions, in fact, before she got married. And she, she should have told her husband, really, she wanted to. But her mother had told her, you know, the best thing to do is to just get, get, him to get married first and then you tell him. So she kept delaying the day of um, judgment, maybe, you know. She get, you know, kept delaying the day of judgment. And then, um, well, long story short, the day she divulged the truth to the husband, he asked her to leave his house. So for fear of backfire, yeah. or for fear of, what if he will not forgive me? Or for fear of, I don't know how he will take it. He might blacklist me. Society will judge me. I might be stigmatized. People run away from the truth. And so they, come, so they come into relationships, you know, trying to, which is the word I use, the word I use to save guard themselves from seemingly predictors. I mean, who could even be their own spouse or, 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 or in laws? You know, so, I mean, society is changing. We, we see it every day. So, how would you respond to that? You mentioned the mother. That's the place of family. The place of family is another thing in marriage. I can say maybe they are the talk party and three is a crowd. Mm -hmm. One and two, three. Three makes it a crowd. When we talk about marriage, okay, is the husband and the wife. I'm not saying that the parents or the mother or the father, whatever, they don't they, are, they don't matter. They do. If especially in Yoruba, let's leave culture about uh, uh, aside. Yes. Okay. They do culture matters. You expect your in laws, you expect your friends or whatever. But then when it comes to marriage, it's just two. Just two of you. If this guy loves me, maybe the, the, as, as I'm talking on, the, on a scriptural level, as believers, 
okay if this guy is yours he will take you for who you are and it's better let him know who you have been this is the reason jesus died he died for the righteous and we we're born in sin in sin we were conceived nobody was born a righteous i have my past you have your past let's discuss it okay if it's going well fine it will now be i've seen and i've heard it has caused divorce in some homes that they have to hear it outside you she said okay why didn't you tell me okay she was even accusing him and he was also accusing her why didn't you tell me if i had heard it firsthand from you not from outside that you never can tell you woman being we just go round, just go round. You never can tell what will happen the next ten years. Okay, so now can we speak to you? Because now we're speaking to the spouse who is not forgiving or the spouse who is not um, um, born again, so to speak. Can we speak to the believing spouse who is married to an unbeliever? And is going through a situation because we are speaking about agreement right now. I mean, let's say that is a woman who is born again who has to subject herself to her husband's instructions because, of course, the Bible says, you know, submit yourself one, one, one another in love. And, you know, the man is not a believer, but she's a believer, and then she has to, let's even be more practical. Let's say there's devotion, you know, the woman believes that the family should have a devotion because she's a believer, and then she calls the children together, but the husband stands against it. What should be the best way to handle such a situation? All right, so in this scenario, um, the woman is a believer. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I don't think it really matters who is the believer as long as there's a believer in the family. And um, what one of the implications of being a believer is more often than not, we have to take leadership. We have to see the bigger picture. And if we are operating by um, the guidelines of um, Bible and the Holy Spirit, we understand that a lot of the times in taking leadership, we have to decrease right what we want um for the greater good now i would recommend that um they talk about it but not always on the spot it's one of the things that we've had to uh, understand gradually in our relationship and that's a relationship between believers where sometimes there are issues to be addressed but addressing them in that moment is never the right right thing because people are not in the mood and it's not an atmosphere that people are capable of receiving and so um, for such a scenario, you wouldn't, whether it's a believer or not, get married to somebody that you can't talk to. You know, um, that they are not a believer doesn't necessarily mean that they won't always listen to you. So keep it till later, and whoever is available for the devotion, get the devotion done. At the end of the day, you don't want to have devotion and lose the marriage, no, and you exactly. don't want to have devotion and isolate the unbeliever or the unbelieving husband. What is an absolute win for you is to be able to have the devotion and eventually have that husband start coming for the devotion, right? So it's not, it, just make sure it's not a competition. And I believe that eventually he will be capable of receiving. Sometimes it can start with him enduring, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do things the same way you've made a compromise because of his happiness. You might make a compromise and start attending devotion because of your happiness. Um, and then before you know, he's paying attention, he's actually paying attention to what you're saying. And, um, and then it goes beyond what is said during the devotion discussions and preaching and everything. Our lives, our ministries, right? Certainly. Yeah, so in our everyday life, I believe that when we manifest um, that indirectly, even without talking, you get to speak, um, you get to speak and testify as to the things that you and wish to preach about or through your actions. Amazing. Thank you so very much for that. Okay, now, so let's go back to the Ruth and Naomi story. Ruth had no reason, no clear-cut reason to, you know, throg along with Naomi, her mother-in-law. Things were hard, tough for both of them. And like, uh, like a young girl, I mean, she should have probably gone to look for another man, you know, to get married to and have her life properly settled. But she decided to go with Naomi. And we know how the story ended, how she found Boaz in the place of service. So I want us to address the, 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 the issues of patience and perseverance. How can we speak to our younger generation to be patient, to persevere? And even when, for instance, I mean, the woman is the one who's provided the money in the home, and then the husband, you know, is not doing so well. Although there are some men who are just you know, naturally lazy, they don't want to go about fending for their homes. And so the women are forced, you know, out of pressure mm -hmm. to deliver on both roles. 
you know is it so how do we address such issues what should we say to the woman who is bearing most of the weight and then a, a, a woman who has a husband who's not supportive of of you know taking care of the home what should we say to such a couple mr nature okay. um so good question so on the day we take our vows we say for better for, for worse, better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> but remember that marriage is is a marathon it's a long race it's not a sprint we're not over it in, in one day or one year mm -hmm. and it's the kind of relationship where you get your certificate at the beginning of the race yeah. and not at the end of the race yeah. so usually with with good men they might go through roller coaster rides where things are very good they're financially buoyant and all then there are times when they dip and those are the times when the lady the, the wife is is a help the helper the mate so the lady coming in at those times shouldn't be a problem at all. It's, it's, it's natural, it's normal. But painting the other scenario where you said the man might be a lazy man and he's not even prepared to cater for the family. Mm -hmm. At times like that, the woman has to take that role. Yes, it might cause a lot of controversies, especially with women that might say, okay, I'm the one providing and start to talk down mm -hmm. the man or starts to behave in you know different ways where the man starts to aggravate the man and starts to cause more controversy in the home saying oh because you're the one bringing the money is that why you're talking to me this way mm -hmm. but the truth is if the woman is the believer everything is settled because in christendom our faith says that even if you are the one that is carrying the home you still have to keep that humility once humility is in it, mixed with a little bit of wisdom, you know, just shakes of everything. Kindness, wisdom, patience, endurance. they're fine, endurance, mm -hmm. everything goes well. Because the woman, we know when to speak and when not to speak. I'm not even saying it in a scenario where she doesn't want to speak to, to get the man angry, no. She just knows when to restrain herself so that it will not make a little puddle of water an ocean. Yeah. So wisdom is principle here. Yeah. It's the principal thing to direct and to keep. Okay, so just uh, I, I, I would like to know as well, um, culture. How do we deal with culture in our homes? You know, culture is quite an issue for some people. Where you have, where you're from a cultural, I mean, a strong cultural um, family, where they believe that traditions are traditions. Mm -hmm. You know, we will never compromise on our traditions, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And imagine if you're married in that kind of a home, I mean, and then they have to say to you, you know, we bow to greet, for instance. Yeah. We eat maybe with our hands, and these are things you're not necessarily used to. And then maybe when your mother-in-law is in is in your house, you there are certain things that you must do for her. Mm -hmm. So how can we define our? I mean, because I, I know that as a man and wife, you're now one. Mm -hmm. But how can you now define you know your love in the face of such influences? Yeah. All right. So um, all right. So uh, scripture says that um, therefore a man shall leave his parents and leaves his wife and um, understanding that we are one right I think that to a large extent it's important to be able to distinguish that which matters to us versus that which we do because they matter to the people that we love mm, right? nice, good. so when we have that we don't we learn not to just compromise for each other but to compromise for the things that matter to each other also and sometimes it's family right there are things that we do, it's, it's diplomacy. It's not because we believe in the system, it's not because we share the value system, but it's like, it's only for a while, right? So why not just go through it? Um, that being said, we are very conscious of the fact that our relationship is between my wife, myself, and the Holy Spirit. And there are times where the Holy Spirit in us leads us to go against what we would ordinarily agree on if you're looking at physically, right? But as long as we have a unified front, we are not put aside, then nothing can come in between. I think that even with culture and with family, external influences, this also applies. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. 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 The place of the husband matters here. Okay. Especially when it has to do with the husband culture or whatever. It is a place of defending the wife. You come in here to defend her, to shield her. 
because there must some, there will likely of course there are so many times that some things will come from the father's from the husband's place she will not have a say and if she dare say it's going to be another thing so it's now the responsibility of the husband to come in not to be disrespectful to his people or his culture but a kind of shield that he should know how it will relate to his family so that it will not affect the wife a kind of time of protecting her shielding her from more enemies from family the in-laws and whatever then it comes a time that when decision had to be made okay he would now tell the family maybe the mother or the father that sorry i can't make a decision on my own we are together i need to consult my wife and of course you can be rest assured that it will be favorable but then i cannot decide on my own in that way he's protecting her and so even if they go to her because there's some funny ideologies in mm -hmm. families too they will go to her because they know she has to say something mm -hmm. and if she says something it's going to be another thing mm -hmm. so she will now say okay please i am i have to wait for my husband yeah. so it's like he is transferring them to her and she is transferring mm -hmm. them to him mm -hmm. okay i can't do anything on my own unless i see my husband mm -hmm. i can't do anything on my own unless i see my my wife so but basically is the work of the husband you should know when you are coming to protect her, to shield her, to help her. Okay? And God will help us through. God will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, it's been an amazing time of discussion with these great people. And I'm sure you've learned a thing or two from today's discussion. Remember that God expects us to give our 100%. Like he gave his 100% to us. He wasn't considerate of whether we deserve the love. He gave everything, even when we were not deserving of his love. So do sing for your spouse, do sing for your children, spread love, true love, pure love wherever you go. And right now we want to offer praise and thanksgiving to God for all that he has done for us and with our substance we will give cheerfully this morning. Do you have something in your hand? An offering? Please send your offering to the details on the screen right now as the brothers will take us in a short praise session. You made a way. Made a 
God does love a cheerful giver, and thank you for giving cheerfully this morning. God bless you. So I'm back with my panelists, my discussants, uh, Mr. Um, Philip Bosi, um, Mrs. Ketel, and of course, the beautiful couple, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony. And we want to just ask uh, a few more questions before we run off the discussion this morning. Um, so I know that in today's world, divorce cases are quite, you know, high. We hear that people just get separated over flimsy excuses, you know. Sometimes it's money, sometimes it's that someone cheated on the other person. But yes, let's talk about that. So if you find your spouse, God forbid, not your spouse. <laughs> but if someone finds, if a believer finds his spouse, either finds or gets to know about his spouse being involved in adultery, what should be the approach for reconciliation? Okay, so that question is to me, right? That means to you. <laughs> so adultery. Um, so the spouse is definitely going to be pain. There's going to be that pain about um, why, how could she do this? But remember, because we are from this part of the world, culture has a lot to play with adultery, especially when it's the male that does it. Yes, a lot of people might say, oh, what is he talking about? No, but because the male usually says to himself that, oh, I can have as many women as I want. And if I do commit adultery, it's not out of my heart going to this person. It's just, it was just a short thing, just for a time, because my flesh was weak and I threw myself at it. When it's the other way around, when it's the woman that commits adultery, the man would go absolutely ballistics. Because men believe to an extent that if a woman would do this, it means she has sort of given part of her heart or herself to this person for her to get to this stage. Mm -hmm. But for men, a man can do anything with anybody else. And, and get just, away with it. Not just get away. It, it doesn't even mean anything to him. Yeah. He can see the woman the next day and just walk on by. So for men, it's that feeling. So what happens if this happens in a relationship? So the Bible tells us that Okay, so um, we should forgive is the first thing, forgive. But there are two things, forgive and forget. If you forgive, do you forget? How do you take that memory out of your mind? Every time you look at the person, does it replay in your mind that this is what happened? And if that, ha if that is the case, it's going to be very difficult to let go. So the first thing, if you have forgiven, which is what you should do, really, is the other thing we need to work on is how to forget about it and move on which is the harder thing to do and which is where you actually need god and the holy spirit to fully yeah. take control of your mind and your heart in that situation and turn it around otherwise five ten years down the line you are still looking at the person and you're still remembering that okay this person cheated on me yeah. most times most men in that situation or women will say okay i'm going to do mine back Definitely. Which is usually the, the case. world system. And you the start society. to plan on how I'm going to you know, get pay vengeance, back. pay back. Even if we're staying in this relationship, I'm going to do, get my own back so that anytime I think about it, I'll say, oh, well, I did mine back. But because we're believers, because we're children of God, we do not operate in the way the children of the world operate. For instance, when I was younger and I watched the movie, and you see beautiful actors and actresses and in the end they end up together married and you're like wow this is the best couple in the world Features. then six months down the line yeah. it's all over and you're wondering how on earth why would you divorce such a beautiful woman so i started i learned early that that love is not a feeling if it's a feeling it means if i go to work today and my boss is mean I come back with that feeling and I'm mean towards my spouse. Whatever happens, I'm like a flag, wherever the wind blows. But because love is a decision, you decide to love. And once you've decided to love, very few things can break through that. Especially for people that take a decision and see it through. So if you're one of those people that see through your decisions, that no matter what, come hell and high waters, I'm going to remain in this marriage. My marriage is not going to break. We're going to have grandkids together. We're going to live till we get gray. 
if that has been your decision from day one and you did not sign a prenup or bring up a prenup that's okay we're getting married let's sign if anything happens you are not getting any of the money but if your decision is i'm going to get old and gray with this person yeah. there should be a part of your heart that would forgive and yeah. move Amazing. All right, then. Okay, so I have a question for you, Mr. and Ms. Anthony, and we are both going to answer this question. So, he said that we should have a heart to forgive. And I know that it is only natural to disagree in marriage. You have a lot of ups and downs, you know, challenges here and there. But how much buffer should one create in a relationship? I mean, buffer for forgiveness. I mean, is there a point where you say, you know, I've had it up to here, I'm done. It's over. Okay, let me, let me go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, the Bible says that we should forgive the seven times, the seven times seven, right? So it means that no matter what, you should be ready to forgive. Now, when I say no matter what, you should be ready. First of all, um, before um, before you accepted the person to marry the person or before you accepted to come into a relationship with that person you should first of all know that this individual has flaws this individual is not perfect mm -hmm. and i myself i am not perfect so if i'm forgiven i will also do my own that this person will be expected to forgive also so no matter what the only thing is i would i would personally say is, if you don't come to that agreement initially then there will be an issue because we like we did not agree for this or we did not accept that this was part of the equation so because you've done this i'm leaving but if you've agreed initially that no matter what happens personally you've accepted it personally so that no matter what the person does you'll be like okay it's painful but what do i do i pray i get myself back together then I come ask you, how do you feel? Do you think you would do this again? No, okay, I forgive you. Remember, forgiveness is not for the person. Forgiveness is for yourself so that you can move and you can be a better person also. That's what I think. Thank, yeah. Thank you. So, Mr. Tony? Yeah, so um, if we model our marriage to love like Christ loved the church, then I think that there, there's no, there no fi finite limit to how much we can forgive, right? But of course, we are human. We only strive to be like Christ. We are not yet in the continuous journey. And um, at the end of the day, it's about communication, I think. Forgiveness and communication work um, hand together, hand in hand, because the truth is that there are things that will get to you way more than other things would. And understanding that this person loves you, it's, I think it's very important that. Um, you also communicate the things that are your pain points also. Forgiving is, doesn't also necessarily mean that um, someone has done something wrong or that um, an act has been committed. Sometimes you need to forgive someone for omitting something. You know? That's true. Yeah, for omitting. I, I mean, recently I, I, I've had to learn that um, sometimes how I give attention to my wife isn't necessarily the way that matters to her. And, you know, because of that, I have to apologize, I have to this, I have to that. But I wouldn't even know if she doesn't even open up about it. And for the fact that it's something I'm learning, um, I'm learning and I'm growing in, then she also has to be patient while I also improve my capacity in that aspect. So unlimited forgiveness, um, trusting in God for that strength, modeling the marriage after Christ, and at the end of the day, communication also. If one doesn't communicate with you, you continue to walk in error. Thank you, thank you. I, I like that you said that sometimes we, when we even commit omission, we should be ready to forgive. And then you spoke about love language. Let's just delve into that very quickly. Love language. Um, we see in the case of Ruth and Naomi how that Ruth served. She served with all her might. And thankfully she got the reward from that act of service. So act of service is one of the core um, love languages, you know. Um, but can you just throw a little light into service? For people who are already married, what kind of service can you do for your spouses to spice up your relationship and then bond, I mean, to strengthen your bond as man and, and woman? Yeah, the service here, yeah. I'll use your word, love language. Love language means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can know the love 
language that is for your husband, your spouse, if you don't really know him. Mm. And you won't know the love language for your wife if you don't really know her. My own love language might be just come and sit down when you are back home. Just sit down, let me be seeing your face. Okay? And not to another spouse, to a lady, might be, okay, get me roses or cake or whatever. So it differs. And so for you to be able to to be perfect in your own, things getting out like you need to know her. She needs to know you. And that's the only the only way you can be of service to her. How can what what do we mean by service? Something you can do like, okay, I want to minister to you. I want to I want you to see that okay, I am available when you need it or when you need me. So you need to know her that's your place of service. What does she want? What does she like? It's not about money. It's not about some people might not even be your presence. It might just be your smile. It might just be your hug. It might just be just sitting down watching TV together. Mm. So that's a place of service. So we must find little opportunities. Yes. And even in the little things that we do, we do little it. ways we can spark off romance, affection, oh, yes. and show that we're truly committed and to loyal to our spouse. It's yeah. been a great discussion having all of you on the table today. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony, for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Neche and uh, Philip Bosa. Thank you, Mrs. Kainde Cattell. And thank you, everyone who has been watching so far. Our God is a God of love. Yeah. Love is God. God is love. And if you cannot find love within the bandwidth of God himself, then you're not loving. So I encourage every one of us, I will step out this week. Make sure you're shining love everywhere you go yeah. god bless you and thank you for joining us again just in case you missed us if you're if you're joining us for the first time today please do fill up the guest form in the link um, um somewhere i uh, you know um, um, on the channel there and we'll be glad to connect with you thank you for joining us have a love week have a week full of god's love one of the things we enjoy most is to connect with our family you are one of us right now so please do not hesitate to visit us on our youtube channel to watch the many resources available to you there and to connect with us online we have our social media handles showing now on the screen connect to us send us a message we'll send messages back to you and we'll be praying for you god bless you and have a great week from all of us here bye bye, bye.